Hello everyone, my name is John Weiner. I'm from the University of Nevada Arena in the Mountain Eagle Hydrology Group under the tutelage of Dr. Adrian Hartpole. My talk today is, is on snow and why it matters to water resources now and in the future. Does anyone know where this picture is from? This is the Tuolumne River, which winds down through Yosemite to the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, where it then gets piped down to right here in San Francisco. That's right, if any of you have filled up your water bottles from the tap this week, you're drinking water that comes straight from the Sierra Nevada. In fact, you're probably drinking snowmelt that's been stored in Hetch Hetchy since it melted in the spring or early summer. Snow is a critical water resource in California, the Western US, as well and worldwide. In fact, over a sixth of the world's population live in areas that are snowmelt dominated. This is a figure from a 2006 paper by Barnett et al. It shows in blue and outlined in red all the areas worldwide that are snowmelt dominated. This encompasses over a sixth of the world's population. The authors note that the number is even probably higher than that. So then I ask, well, how well do we actually understand snow when it seems to be so important to water resources, both locally and globally? And I would argue that we really don't understand it well at all. Um, but we do have a pretty good measure of where snow falls, um, when it falls, and when it when it melts. We really have a hard time when we go to really large scales or really small scales to try to understand snow processes. And we have an even bigger problem when we consider a changing climate, which is going to drastically change our water resources and snow snow processes, such as snow snow pack quantity snow pack seasonality, and whether we even have snow at all, or if it just falls is rain. And so my group up in Reno is trying to address some of these questions. This is a, fe oh, this is a National Geographic figure um, that is showing the extent already of some of these changes. And so what we can see is widespread decreases in snow pack quantity across the western US. Uh, but there are other things to consider, just than how much and one is uh, how long snow lasts. And so my lab mate, Rose Bierski, who you all have the honor of hearing later, present later this session, is working on that exact question. This is a figure of hers showing snow seasonality in the Great Basin and classifying it as ephemeral, which means that snow is on the ground for less than two months every year, seasonal, which means snow is on the ground for more than two months every year, or both, so it depends on the year. And the thing to note is that most of the Great Basin is ephemeral or, ephemeral or seasonal, and those areas can be the most vulnerable to climate change. Someone else in my group, Patrick Longley, is working on uh, rain to snow effects. And what he's showing here is changes in recharge and runoff, which is essentially human water availability across the western US. And we see um, widespread decreases in recharge and runoff and water availability. So taking it all the way back, we're now looking at a picture of Hetch Hetchy, which I said is where San Francisco gets most of its water. And reservoirs like Hetch Hetchy um, rely on the fact that they're going to get most of their water in the spring with snow melt. But if that changes for one reason or another, that's going to have a really big impact on society as a whole, um, including all of us as people. And so that brings me all the way back to right where we are, the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Because as I said, all the water that we're using and drinking this week basically comes from the Sierra Nevada. And that's all snow melt. So we have to really understand what is happening up there and what the snow processes are and how that's all going to change the climate change. And so while we're all reliant, especially here in the Western US, on snow and snow melt, again, I think we have a really limited understanding and climate change and just our pure reliance on it makes it absolutely necessary for us to study and learn more about this critical, critical water resource. And to put it much, much more simply, snow. It matters. Thank you.